So some people are saying that uh, the whole attack of Iran on Israel was uh, a concert. It was all coordinated. It was all a movie. And it's baffling, really. You sit there for several hours watching, you know, everything coming from Iran, landing in Israel, explosions, you know, people from the ground sending you things. You know, yesterday we spent about three and a half hours reporting on everything, seeing missiles landing, the Iron Dome, Arrow 3, the most advanced air defense systems not intercepting anything, the Iranian missiles managing to trick these air defense systems by releasing devices to deviate them from the target and successfully landing in Israel. But some people are calling it a theater. And I wonder why that is, because some people are Arab, some people are Muslim, and, you know, some are telling, yeah, it's just a game between Iran and the U.S. and Israel. Before I'll get to that, because it's, it's very important to, to note why people, uh, you know, starting, start to come up with these theories. But five countries in total, at least five countries, helped Israel intercept this biggest attack in history of drones. So you've had cruise missiles, drones, ballistic missiles. According to the IDF spokesperson, all of them combined carried out a combined weight of 60 tons of explosives of TNT in their warheads. From these countries that helped Israel, the United States Britain, France, that's according to the Israeli IDF spokesperson. But we had other reports of obviously Arab participation because, hey, you know, why not join the party of shame or the hypocrisy festival? These include Jordan, who blatantly said it, you know, the Jordanian uh, foreign minister, he went out in a statement, said, we will intercept anything in our airspace, whether it's from Iran or Israel. But what's worse about Jordan, by the way, is that we also had reports that they allowed Israeli fighter jets in Jordan to intercept, to intercept the Iranian drones and missiles. And then we also had reports that Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates also participated. So why do some people doubt? So you have everything in front of you. You've seen it. I've seen it. People reported it directly right from Israel being attacked, bombs landing in sensitive places. We release it to the people. Everyone saw that across the world. But now some people tell you, nah, nah, man, don't believe that, it's all an act. You know, Iran told the U.S. It was an act. Uh, something fishy about it. Well, number one, from the sum of the Arab states, when you have such a shameful position of weakness, you don't want to believe that someone has a superior quality to you. So it stems from a position of weakness. You're weak, you're incapable, you're shameful, and you don't want to accept the fact that someone is better than you and they can do something. Someone is more brave than you, for example. Then there's also the racist notion. So you'll see some of the Arab states talking about it as if it's the Persians, right? Imagine that the Persians attacking. And they're coordinating everything. And because you had this feud with Syria, and look what they did in Syria, which well, I'll get to in a sec. And then you have the notion of some, some, obviously, and some in the Arab world, what I was speaking about, not everyone, obviously, Arab states officially, but some people too. And then you have some people in the Muslim world. Why do they do that? 
they do that because all of their approach, all of their outlook on life is stems from a sectarian perspective. So not only just a religious perspective, but from a sectarian perspective in religion. So you will see someone belonging to a certain sect that's not from um, the sect that Iran follows, for example, Shia Islam. No, you know, they, they won't do that. You know, look at what they've done. They killed this and that, and they're not genuine. Right? Despite my comments that I spoke about previously, uh, my view about this ignorant view um, in according to some people when it comes to sectarianism that is completely prohibited in islam as a religion really you have blatant warnings in the holy quran from sectarianism one of the verses in the quran says or in english those who have separated their religion became sects you have nothing to do with them you know, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And another verse, you have a verse saying, Don't be of the polytheists. From those who have separated their religion, became sects, each sect is happy with what they have. And if you go back, obviously, to the Prophet, peace be upon him, period, no one called himself Sunni or Shia. Neither the Prophet nor the Sahaba, peace be upon all of them, at the time. Obviously, it was a political feud. Who controls the Muslim world? Then it started to have this religious cover, really, and then it became a uh, belief and all of that. No root in Islam as a religion. Political feud that took a religious shape afterwards, similar to many cultural things that took religious shape afterwards as well. So the approach of these people is, number one, a sectarian approach. Oh no, Iran, you know, a Shia country attacking Israel. And where's the Sunni countries? You know, they're not doing anything. So no, we can't accept that something must be wrong. Something must be wrong. We don't believe that they're able to do such a thing. Then you have a people who have a combination of problems. So they will have the inferiority complex. So they are cowards, incapable. And, you know, people who don't have the guts to stand up for what's right. And they can't handle the fact that, you know, a country stands up for what's right combined with the racist element combined with the sectarian element that's the worst combination and you have many of them and they will frame everything that iran or any other resistance movement does if they will support hezbollah they support them for their own interests, their expansion is they want to control the arab world they want to go they support Hamas, will tell you, oh, they're uh, trading with the Palestinian cause and they support the Palestinians. Everything, they don't believe everything. And unfortunately, with some of them, it's a lost case. But what's important to highlight here is the lengths that these people go to, despite the fact that there's evidence in front of you. So either you're ignorant and blind and haven't seen the evidence in front of you, that myself and many other people spent hours publishing to the world. That is now, you know, it's all over social media, many networks as well publishing some of them. Or you have a serious problem. I think you might have a serious problem, really. Which leads me to the last thing that people have a problem with, and that's Syria. So, obviously, you had the Syrian movement starting, revolution. You had a government crackdown. Then it became bloody. The government had a crackdown on some people with genuine will to change 
however, quickly shifted to something else. Many people intervened. Many decent figures in the opposition, in the genuine opposition, mysteriously assassinated. All of a sudden you have groups like ISIS kidnapping, a genuine will of the people for a positive change. And obviously Iran and Russia and many other countries intervene. Obviously the US, uh, the UK, Israel, and alongside some other countries as well, they created ISIS to serve their own interests and wreak havoc alongside some other movements as well. And the other parties obviously stuck with the Syrian government because to them that the democratic movement or call for a change is changed specifically because there are many voices in the opposition. Now, not to judge anyone really, but just to make an observation, because in Syria particularly you have a genuine will for a change. And also you didn't live in the most democratic place in the world. However, we cannot be naive and ignore the fact that uh, many people who opposed the government were agents. That's very important. And again, that's not to say that the Syrian government is great or has been on the right side forever. They have their pros, they have their pros, excuse me, and they have their cons. And Iran is obviously looking at it from a strategic perspective. They had feuds with some movements, they had disagreements, even with Hamas at the time. But they continued to obviously support um, the resistance. They had obviously a different, you know, approach when it comes to Syria. And obviously the people who are opposing Iran, they have a problem with that. And my comment to such people is, are you that short-sighted? Why are you so short-sighted? And why can you not have a more strategic and broader view? Why do you not understand that you don't have to agree with everyone to support something right? Why does it have to be all white and all black? Why can't you say that I support them in that act, but I reject them in the other act? Why can't you say I don't condone, I don't support, for example, the religious interpretation of the Iranian government, right? Internally, what it does. I don't like, and I think it's wrong to impose religion on the population. As a matter of fact, I sympathize with the Iranian people who resist religion being imposed on them, for example. Or I don't like what uh, Iran has done in Syria and I think some of the things that they've done are wrong yet when it comes to Palestine they have done something right do you have to agree on everything you don't have to agree on everything plus with this position right now the only parties the only groups the only movements supporting the Palestinian resistance that's been demonized across the whole world. Demonized, labeled as terrorists, labeled as this, labeled as the only country backing them unconditionally, directly and through other groups and movements too, is Iran. It's Iran. It's not another Arab country. It's not like a... Iran. Iran is supporting them. Who are you serving by demonizing Iran now with their support for the Palestinian people? The people who want Iran and the Palestinian resistance down. Clearly. 
And what they don't realize is there's a massive campaign going on supported by Israel in the Arab world and in the, in the Muslim world particularly to demonize Iran and anything to do with the Palestinian resistance. Don't you have any sort of strategic view? Can't you look one centimeter outside your tight little bubble and worldview? So I just wanted to highlight this because I find this very important, uh, particularly when it comes to situations where you talk about a fate of people, the destiny of people, when you have massacres going on, when certain positions you take means there's less bloodshed, means less innocent people can be killed. And if you're talking from a Muslim perspective, where are you from the verse that says, Woman nasa jamia. He has, who has saved the soul as if he saved all of humanity. Isn't it important? Because previously they were criticizing Hezbollah. Oh, limited strike. They're just pretending. They're just targeting. They're just this and that. Ignoring the fact that they're at a war of attrition with Israel, exhausting over 30% of the Israeli army. Yet they come and they tell you it's all theater and nothing's working when they haven't thrown the stone at Israel. They didn't throw a stone on Israel, they didn't do anything. They're sitting there lecturing, right? Some of them literally doing nothing. And coming to lecture us about Iran and how they have their own agenda and everything is coordinated and that's why America knew that the missiles and UAVs were launched. Don't you know that they have monitoring systems that know when things are launched? I mean, seriously. No, no, no uh, back, background knowledge at all when it comes to these things. The moment a country presses on a button to release a missile, their enemy will know. Well, even when you talk about, they can do whatever they want to disguise and this and that. These countries monitor each other 24-7, surveillance, GPS, satellites, communication, as espionage. So what do you think that no one would look at Iran? Hello, they said they're going to retaliate. They were expecting a retaliation of UAVs, drones and missiles. So they would monitor everything from satellites, from nearby borders, from countries. They'll be on high alerts. Their batteries will be ready. Everything will be ready. Because some people are now criticizing the fact that many of these missiles were intercepted by other uh, countries, although you've had so many landings in Israel, successful, harmful, damaging, frightening landings that petrified the whole country. So they'll tell you, oh, no, they knew they coordinated it with them. And there's just, uh, you know, having a show. Well, what, what a hell of a show. <laughs> That's the least that we can say. What a hell of a show is Iran putting on and you know what I prefer this show to your show I prefer that show to the no show to the nothingness to the shameful positions of these silent countries and silent people as well and those trying to deviate and take away from anything good being done anything in the right direction towards a criminal entity that's committing crimes against humanity and a genocide by confirmation of the biggest court in the world, the ICJ, committing a genocide. Now legal firms in the West telling you you can't support them with weapons or with anything because they're committing crimes against humanity and you, you're complicit with them. Do they ignore all of that? Right, and they tell you that it's a show, and that really is what I wanted to talk about. 
and because because there's a trend going on from from many people and I, I really just wanted to highlight how short-sighted some people are how ignorant some people are how deeply manipulated some people are and how many people can't really have a broad view a horizontal view a strategic view where they realize that really and truly you don't have to agree on everything with someone or a country or whatever it is all the time to say that everything they do is wrong or everything they do is wrong. But when someone does something right, even though you might not agree with them, you say that it's right. Otherwise, what's your moral compass exactly? Because if you want to talk about it from a moral perspective, let's just talk about it from pure moral perspective. Although there's the sectarian perspective, there's the ignorance perspective, there's lots of stuff, racist perspective. But let's say uh, a moral perspective. You believe that what Israel is doing is an immoral act. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> immoral is like very light. A genocide, a crime, very highly immoral act. And then someone is responding to that act. And you go and criticize that party supporting. And by the way, not realizing all of the campaign going on, by the way, to undermine what they've done, right? Make it appear less than what it is, a historical moment in history the biggest attack of uavs in history a massive embarrassment to israel a massive blow to israel's national security to israel's societal security to israel at a moral level to israel on a psychological level what they've done to them undermining everything and only focusing on the short-sighted ignorant perspective and that's what I want to talk to you about in this video, and I will see you soon in the next video. Take care.